Welcome to making Stuart Model Steam Plant. Working on the Stuart Model's Double 10 V steam engine, checking the crankshaft and bearings, followed by the repair of a common problem with the eccentric sheave fixings on small Stuart engines. This Stuart Double 10 V and the Stuart S50, along with the Stuart steam pump, will all be made into an upmarket steam plant using a Stuart 504 boiler to supply the steam. This is early days in this series and I'm still waiting for some more parts to arrive from America. What I'm doing at the moment is just making sure that the engine is firmly screwed down to the board so it doesn't rattle about. Whenever you work on a Stuart 10 V with this type of flywheel, it needs to be elevated otherwise the flywheel contacts the bench, that bends the crankshaft and the rest is history. I've partially straightened this crankshaft because it was slightly bent. And as you can clearly see, the flywheel is running fairly concentrically at the moment, which is more than it was when I received it. This is a good example of a Stuart Double 10 V and it runs quite well. Before I go any further, I'm going to lubricate the engine. Every moving part needs to be oiled. The crankshaft main bearings, the big ends, the eccentric sheaves, the crosshead and small end, not forgetting to oil the end of the eccentric rods where they fit into the valve forks just under the steam chests. Most importantly, I need to pump plenty of oil into the cylinders. When this steam plant is completed, this engine will be fitted with a Stuart displacement lubricator, but at the moment it just has a blanking plug. It starts readily enough and runs quite well. I'll stop talking for a while so you can listen to it. Here I'm checking the valve timing by ear. I'm rotating the crankshaft with some compressed air being fed to the engine. Not a very high pressure, just enough to make a hissing noise so I can hear when the air is admitted and exhausted. And it's not perfect, but it's not bad either. As you listen to this engine, please be aware that my workbench is a soundboard. It's quite hollow underneath. This amplifies any mechanical knocking noises and makes it very easy to hear when you have a problem. Even though the flywheel seems to be running very true, there's a slight bit of run out on the end of the crankshaft, but it's not much and I will revisit the crankshaft shortly. I'm using a piece of scotch brite to do two things, clean the flywheel and put the engine under load. I'm now going to speed up the engine and put it under a heavy load. As you can hear and see, the engine runs very well, but I would like to just slightly adjust the timing, but there is a problem. One of the very small slot-headed 7BA grub screws, which are used to hold the eccentric sheave in place onto the crankshaft, is broken. I need to remove the broken grub screw and fit one that isn't broken. Here, I've carefully slackened off the slot-headed grub screw that holds the flywheel in place, and now I can remove it. Here is the offending broken grub screw. These things break all the time, they just are not strong enough for the job. This broken one was easy enough to remove using a small pair of pliers. This is not always the case. It seemed to take an age to remove this screw. This video clip is running at double normal speed. Eventually though, I removed the broken grub screw and here is the threaded hole. When I removed the flywheel, it was difficult because the crankshaft had been scored by the grub screw. Here I'm removing the damage with a small needle file. And now I can withdraw the eccentric sheave without any difficulty. I can't seem to find out where to buy 7BA Allen head grub screws, so I'm going to rethread the hole 6BA for a 6BA Allen head grub screw. I'll just blow away the swarf with my airline. All I need now is a 6BA Allen head grub screw from my box of 6BA and other assorted Allen head grub screws, which were given to me many, many years ago by my friend Randy Blackburn, who sadly died recently. It was a very simple job to reassemble the engine and retime it. 
I'm not going to drone on and on about valve timing on steam engines. If you want to know more about this, I've made quite a few videos showing how to time steam engines. And if you're not sure how it's done, please watch my series, Model Steam Engines for Beginners. The initial setting is the highest lobe of the eccentric sheave at 90 degrees to the crank pin. That's the best starting point, but in reality, you generally have to tweak it a little bit. A few degrees before top dead centre is the usual correct setting. This allows the steam or air to be admitted to the cylinder slightly early, which cushions the reciprocating motion. Many engines that I work on have very late admission, and sometimes this is desirable if you want really, really slow running. With this particular engine though, I am not going to go into obsess mode, because the owner wants me to fit reversing gear to it. And that's why I haven't changed the grub screw in the other eccentric sheave, because basically that is okay. I'm resetting the valve timing at this end too, because it was very fractionally out. When setting the valve timing on a twin cylinder engine, it's much easier if you can just use one cylinder at a time. So it's simple, take off the inlet pipe, feed compressed air to one cylinder only, set that end, then feed air to the other cylinder and do exactly the same. You will have noticed two things here. First of all, the response to the regulator was stunning, and the second one was when I lifted it off the bench, it became very quiet, because as I mentioned earlier, my bench is a soundboard. For the slow running sequence, I did cheat a little bit. I slackened off the clamp bolts that hold the bearings down to the sole plate. Now I'm re-tightening them, but it still runs very well. This is a very good engine. I look forward to fitting the reversing gear and painting it. That's it for this episode, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.